In an effort to increase Link's arsenal of items at his disposal, I like to move on to creating one of the staples of any Zelda game, the bombs. In case it wasn't clear already, the bombs are able to be placed on the ground where they will sit momentarily before flashing for a bit and then exploding. These explosions are used to damage enemies or break through crumbling walls. In this video, we're going to focus on the bomb's main functionality of just exploding, and we can worry about those external effects when we get enemies in place. Like some of our other items in the game, we need to think about the bomb's state. It's pretty simple. The bomb can be in its resting state before it moves on to flashing, and then it explodes. To get started with this, we're going to first work on simply showing the bomb on the ground, where it'll be in state zero. We'll place it right in front of Link using the get Link front position function that we've been using for everything like this. Then, if we just draw a bomb sprite at that position, we'll see the bomb on the ground wherever we spawn one. Now, let's start working on making the bomb flash different colors. This is going to be accomplished using a sprite sheet like this, and running it through Animate. Then, when we go to actually draw the bomb, we can just draw this animation. And actually, we can make this even easier by combining both states into the same animation. In the bomb's update function, we can check the bomb's state and only update the animation if it's in state 1. That way, if it's in state 0, it's showing the same animation sprite sheet, but it's just not cycling through the images yet, so it just looks like the static bomb sprite. We'll never see the flashing, though, unless we transition this state. So I'll put in a new timer that counts down from about one and a half seconds. Once it hits zero, the bomb will change to state one, where the animation will begin cycling. Of course, we don't want it to flash like this forever. We want it to blow up. For that, we'll need to create a new kind of explosion object. It can be pretty simple. We just want to display this explosion animation wherever our explosion object exists. Then, when the animation is finished, we can just get rid of the object. So, we'll just create the animation using Animate, update it every frame, and then draw it. We'll set a timer as well that lines up with the animation's end, and as soon as this timer hits zero, we'll remove the object from the game. Here's what it looks like currently. Obviously, we don't want the explosions to spawn on top of Link every time. Rather, we want the bombs themselves to spawn the explosions. So, back in the bomb, we'll reset the timer again once it starts flashing. Once this timer hits zero, we'll remove the bomb from the game, and in its place, we'll spawn one of these explosions. And that's all it takes. Now, Link can run around dropping bombs all over the place. And like I said, once we implement enemies, we can work on making them take damage when they come into contact with these explosions. The code for this video and every other one in the series is available on GitHub. All the details are in the description. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you like the content here, be sure to subscribe. I'm planning to start uploading a lot more videos to the channel coming soon, so be on the lookout for that.